Greetings guys, gals and non-binary pals and welcome back to another virtual pride video. It is Monday, which means I am going to be sitting down and doing my makeup while educating you about something. Today is episode one in a new series that I'm doing, which is Herstory, where I'm going to sit down and I'm going to tell you about an amazing woman that needs more recognition and talking about. And since it is Pride Month, this month they are LGBTQI plus themed. So today the women I have chosen are Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera because they did a lot of stuff together. So I thought I would talk a bit about both of them and for what they have done for us as a community. And I'm really excited because these two women are incredible. So let's get into it. <laughs> Marsha Pay No Mind Johnson was born 1945 and she was a trans activist and key figure in the LGBTQI movement and fight for liberation. Marsha was raised Christian, but a little bit later in life, she moved into Catholic Catholicism. Is that how you say that? And when asked as an adult if she'd ever get married, she said she wouldn't because Jesus was the only man she could trust and who wouldn't laugh at her. So, uh, Christians who use the Bible to be like anti-LGBTQI+. I hope you heard that. <laughs> Marsha started wearing dresses when she was five years old. However, she stopped doing so when kids around the neighborhood would start being really aggressive and attacking her for it. And as an adult, she came out and said that when she was a child, a 13 year old boy molested her, which was another reason she stopped wearing dresses as well, because she felt very unsafe. However, later in life, obviously, she started wearing dresses again after she graduated from high school and ran away to New York with nothing but $15 and a bag full of clothes. Now, Marsha couldn't find a job. It was like impossible to find a job because she was the most marginalized group of everyone. She was black. She was queer and she was gender non-conforming. So like most trans people at the time, she turned to prostitution in order to make her money. And this got her arrested a lot, like to the point where she stopped counting how many times she'd been arrested at a hundred. Whilst in New York, Marsha met a young Sylvia Rivera. She met Sylvia when she was a young teen. Sylvia had a very, very rough upbringing with her dad leaving at her birth and her mother committing suicide when she was three years old. And so she lived with her grandparents who would beat her whenever she wore her grandmother's clothes. And so she ran away when she was 11 years old and Marsha found her not soon after. And Sylvia claims that if not for Marsha, she thinks she would have been dead. So Marsha saved her life and became the mother figure that she never had. Marsha and Sylvia were very close. They were best friends and they were a pair and they did everything together. And so they would regularly attend like nightclubs and bars and things together. So Marsha and Sylvia were key figures in the Stonewall riots. They were at the front lines and they fought the whole time and they fought hard. I did a whole video on Stonewall on Saturday. So if you want to hear more about that, do check that out. Uh, but effectively, after Stonewall happened, the Gay Liberation Front was created and there was a lot of LGBTQI plus activism that was happening at that time. In 1970, Marsha and Sylvia founded their own branch underneath the Gay Liberation Front called STAR, which is the Street Transvestite Action Revolution. And what STAR did was they housed, fed and clothed homeless trans youth because a lot of them, like Sylvia, were abused and ran away from home. And so they created the space for them to live as themselves and take care of them. When Marsha spoke of her activism and what she wanted to achieve and the way she viewed it, she said, she said she wanted to see gay people liberated and free and to have equal rights that other people have in America with her gay brothers and sisters back on the streets and out of prison. She also said about LGBTQI plus activism, we believe in picking up the gun and starting a revolution if necessary. A very powerful woman she was. As I said earlier, Marsha was part of the most marginalized group of people and she had every right and reason to be miserable 
and angry and fragile, but she wasn't. She lived her life as her authentic self and managed to find the joy in anything. She, her friends referred to her as Saint Marcia just because of how strong and resilient and authentic she was to herself and how much she wanted to help others. In terms of being her authentic self, Marcia would hand make a lot of her outfits and would dress so extravagantly with red plastic boots and shimmery robes and dresses and decking out handmade hair pieces such as artificial fruit, flowers, and even Christmas lights. So basically she was a queen. She was a self-proclaimed queen. Like her gender identity was queen, which is beautiful. I love that. I love her. She is my hero. <laughs> As we're all aware, transphobia is a thing both within and outside of the LGBTQI community. And at this time in the early 70s, it was especially prevalent. And uh, a lot of people in the gay liberation front started to really dislike Marsha and Sylvia being a part of it because they thought it jeopardized their point that uh, gay people were just like everyone else. There was no difference between gay people and straight people. And they thought that the extravagant way that Marsha and Sylvia presented themselves was jeopardizing that whole idea. And they were like, you're ruining this for us. They see you and they think, wow, you're weird. So get the fuck out, basically. Which is really sad and really awful. Like, especially because the Gay Liberation Front wouldn't have even existed if it weren't for them and it weren't for the trans community. And to disregard that and their work and sort of claim credit for that and say, well, actually, we don't like you. It's just really shit. Like this was to the point where at Pride in 1973, Sylvia Rivera went to make a speech and she was blocked from speaking. Like they just wouldn't let her get on stage and speak. And when she finally like wrestled for the microphone and she got it, she stood up and she said, if it weren't for the drag queen, there would be no GLF movement where the front line is. And she got booed off the stage from the entire LGBTQI community, they booed her off the stage. And after this, because of how awful it made her feel and because this was supposed to be her community and something that she fought so hard for and she worked so hard to build and to be a part of and to help people, she actually attempted suicide. Marsha found her and saved her life. And I just think that's so, that's just so shit. And it's so awful because these women are still overlooked so much like I know a lot of people have said they've not really ever heard of them and like like I said in my last video they've been like erased from movies and stories and everything it's just so sad because they were such a big part of this and like Sylvia said we literally would not be here without them and without women like them they are the center of LGBTQI activism especially especially trans rights and the beginning of acceptance and understanding of trans people with the creation of STAR. Because of this and because of the amount of stress and hate and grief she was getting for trying to help people and the amount of exclusion and trauma that activism was causing her, Sylvia left activism. She couldn't handle it anymore. And that is completely fair enough. It drove her to attempt suicide and it is so sad because all she wanted to do was help young people like her and she put her heart and soul and life into that and the fact that the community that was meant to be her family and love and accept her and fight for her threw her out and didn't want her help but Marsha still stayed fighting uh in activism and working under star jump forward to the 80s the lgbtqi plus community was devastated by the AIDS crisis. There not being very many resources and very much education around it, it affected so many people. And that became the center of Marsha's activism for that time. And she would march with an organization called ACT UP, which was an organization working to end the AIDS crisis and find a cure and help educate people. As well as marching with ACT UP, Marsha would also nurse a lot of her friends on their deathbeds and just be there for them and attend to them 
and be a friend literally right up until the end. She was such an incredible and lovely and loving human being. Like no matter what happened, no matter how badly she was treated, she just persevered and she pushed through and she never gave up. She just spent her whole life fighting for other people. In 1992, when Marsha was 46 years old, her body was found floating on the Hudson River. Her death was almost immediately ruled as a suicide. However, after many protests, they changed the ruling to unexplained drowning. However, due to Marsha being a black, queer, gender non-conforming person who wasn't even very widely accepted by her own community, she was often ridiculed and attacked, both verbally and very violently. So a lot of people suspected that it was a murder. Sylvia struggled a lot with Marsha's death. I mean, Marsha was like a mother figure to her. And so her death was really, really hard. And she struggled a lot with addiction after that. And in 2001, a decade after Marsha's death, Sylvia managed to sober up and move back to New York and start back in activism. She actually received a lot of help from STAR, which is the organization that her and Marsha founded together. And I think that there's something really beautiful in that, like the organization she created ended up really helping her. And in 2001, after she was clean and back into activism, she marched in the Pride Parade again. Only one year later, she died of cancer. I just find that so sad. Like one year after she got clean and started back in activism and doing what she loved again, she died of cancer. That is so sad and it breaks my heart. Over the years, people have paid more and more attention to Marsha and Sylvia to the point where back in 2012, they reopened the investigation into Marsha's death and it is still open as they look into it and there will hopefully hopefully be an outcome and an answer at some point. Last year they decided that in New York they were going to resurrect a statue of both Marsha and Sylvia to recognize and remember everything they did for the fight for LGBTQI plus rights and liberation. They're currently still looking for an artist who they think will create this sculpture as it should be created. I'm really, really happy that these two women are starting to get the recognition that they well and truly deserve. They did so much for our community and we literally would not be where we are without them. I really hope that this video helped teach you a little bit more about Marsha Pay It No Mind Johnson and Sylvia Rivera and has helped you develop a bit more admiration for them and understand everything that they have done for us. We must never forget them. And if you missed it, please do go watch my video from Saturday all about Stonewall because that is another really big central part in the LGBTQI fight for equality that these two women played a big part in. Thank you so much for coming along. <laughs> I hope that you're enjoying my Pride content so far. Uh, remember to subscribe, hit the bell because I have much more Pride content coming and I'd love to share that with you. I hope that you were able to take this knowledge away with you and share it with people. Maybe share this video with people so that they can learn. Maybe, I don't know. I love you. Stay safe. Keep fighting. Mwah. <laughs> when you close your eyes, you play.